Hi guys, it's Hiroshi from Team Daily Mirror and I'm bringing you another live session right here on Instagram. And for those who have been following, um, following up on our live sessions, we want to thank you for being throughout. And it is our mission to bring a new guest, an inspiring person on board uh, from every other edition. And uh, today I have someone very special for you. She is not just a musician. She is a performing artist, a recording artist. She's an educator in the music field. She's also um, a dazzling personality in, in globally franchised reality shows. And, you know, the list goes on. And uh, it's none other than Ashanti D. Alvis I have for you today. And she's looking as gorgeous as ever. And she's also, I've been seeing her and motivating herself to become better every day and that is something that we also keep an eye on and we also get inspired by so i would like to quickly get her on right now super excited for this one hi hi how's it going it's all good all good and thank you so much for awesome. with us for our daily video it's good to be here nice. so how are you been? I mean, good. All good. So we, we see you everywhere now. We see you on platforms, we see you on our TV channels. And today, like, I saw the, uh, the latest announcement on, on the voice team that you'll be featuring another edition today. So, we are going to join in that as well. So, um, starting off, how is quarantine treating you? And are you up to anything interesting, anything fresh coming up? Uh, quarantine has been... Uh... I think more insightful personally for me than than most other things because you, I mean, you being a performer itself, Hiroshi, you know how it is uh, for us in daily life, right? It's so hectic. I think we met just before lockdown, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I it. yeah. Just right before lockdown. You're probably like one of the only few people I saw last. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we were at the uh, Ananda, uh, Nalanda Big Match performing. That was a really good experience as well. Uh, and like, since then, it's been such a huge shift. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Like, uh, it's been a period of adjustment, adaptation, uh, a lot of uh, uh, introspection, um, figuring out what to do during this period, uh, helping others as much as possible. Um, and also, I think as entrepreneurs, a way to just uh, sort of innovate, use Definitely. your time for innovation. Yeah. Yes. And so before um, actually happened, were you up to yeah. anything or did you have anything in mind in the pipeline for the year maybe like, in terms of music? I was actually just about to release a new music video and uh, mm -hmm. I had just launched my single Rajini A. Uh, which is going to take the tone for my concert series, which is all based on strong women and women empowerment. Lovely. And I was just about to shoot this music video for Rajinie, uh, of which the, Lord, uh, the, the audio I actually launched uh, uh, just prior to lockdown. Um, and I'm still trying to focus on how to get that done uh, post curfew as well. Um, it's going to be a bit difficult because uh, I think things are not looking like it's going to be getting back to normal anytime soon. And the new normal is also going to be something very different for us, right? Yep. So, yeah. And the reason why you inclined towards women empowerment, is there any specific experience or an ideology that you believe in that inspired you to kind of, you know, shift to a theme like that? I think as you grow in this industry as a woman, um, I've been in this industry now for 20 years, since the time I was like a teenager. And uh, I feel you come to a point where it's really important for you to take on uh, a role where you can be a soundboard or an advisor for other women. Uh, it's where I would say a lot of us as women performers in the industry, in the entertainment industry, in whatever, like as in, in, in our own capacities, uh, me as a musician, of course, needs to go. So we have to take our sound in that direction as well to uh, help a lot of other women overcome whatever they, the challenges that they have in their lives. And I think it Lovely. strengthens us. 
Nice. So uh, your career as, as a coach, as an educator, I mean, now we call it a coach because it's, it's kind of a trend, but you have been running academies, you have been, uh, been a silver lining to many out there who want to learn music. So how is the educating part, how is that experience for you as an educator? As an educator, uh, I have a lot of fun teaching all the time because my roles as a woman change so much during even just one day. Like in, in one um, instance, I'm Ashanti the performer. In the other instance, I'm a coach on the voice. In another instance, I'm actually a teacher in a setting teaching little kids, bigger kids, adults. Uh, and um, teaching in different schools and stuff like that. So my roles just shift all the time. Uh, and uh, it's great. Like, I mean, as a teacher, of course, when you, when you think about being a, a music educator, for me, it gives me a lot of personal pleasure because it's like I'm putting uh, the effort that I put into myself now back into little kids who I see potential in. So it's a great space for me. Lovely. And now, right now, we're embracing, embracing the moment and we're living in the moment. But if we kind of yeah. go back down the memory lane, I mean, I've been a big fan of you myself and I've seen you, Thank you. Uh, grow in your own music industry. And while I was growing up myself, to be a decent human being, <laughs> with your music and all that, ever since early 2000s. And yeah. if you kind of go back in, down the memory lane, what are the uh, kind of the the highlights of your music career. Is there anything specifically that you remember that is close to your heart? Wow, my memory lane is really long. Super um, long. <laughs> super long. I have a, quite a, quite a, yeah, long winding memory lane. But when it Was comes it to the it's, well, I mean, you know, being a woman in the music industry, it has to be a little dramatic. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it won't really be much of an industry and you know how colorful our industry is so but oh, yeah. you oh, probably yeah. also know that I stay I'm one of those women who stay away from drama so um, I don't sort of really get caught into a lot of uh, the dramatic side of the industry I'm an observer <laughs> but I mean, yeah like, I think you're already like you're the one who like makes popcorn and just like watch the like, whole like, show, watch the show. <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, no, that being said, like when it comes to going down memory lane with my career highlights, uh, I think I've been fortunate enough uh, from a young age to uh, have the right opportunities and be in the right place at the right time. So that's luck, right? It plays a big role in your career as well. I mean, yes, it's been a lot of hard work. It's been, it's been immense hard work, uh, sleepless years. Uh, also missing uh, a lot of like special stuff when it comes to family birthdays, parents anniversaries, all of that stuff. But I think the sacrifices I made are the things that got me where I am today. But right now I'm focused on, uh, on like, you know, changing that as well. Because after a while when you are in the industry and you fought so hard to make a name and you've gotten to that place where now you feel that you've set a standard you can just relax a little bit and then go back to the little things. I think the little things are very, very important and you shouldn't forget them. But talking about memory lane, um, when I was uh, a teenager, just a like, young teenager, probably like 17 or 18, I got the opportunity to go uh, for my first international competition in China. This was in Shanghai. Um, it was exciting because it was parent free. Uh, I had, I mean, yes, I went to the alone. Yeah, yeah, global experience alone. I felt like a bit of an adult, you know, basically getting about my media schedules and stuff like that. And it was a good prep work for what was to come in the future in the industry too. And um, yeah, I went with a rep, uh, Mrs. Arundhati Sri Ranganathan, who was uh, then um, uh, really high up in the SLBC, Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation, who was handling these things for as a local representative. So I went with Auntie Arundhati and then I performed at this and I won this award called the most potential singer. I was up against, um, I never even knew what the competition was like. So when I got on that stage and I saw these guys at a final, we went in for a full finale. It wasn't even like a semi-final to a final. Then I was nervous. Like when I was backstage, I was nervous because I saw people, I was like, wow, I'm so not prepped for this. Like, you know, I just thought that I could just go here and wing it, but that's not how it works. 
these guys put in so much hard work and i saw it like the girl who won was a multi uh, uh, award a multi um, eurovision award winner and at that time eurovision was huge she oh. is uh, from azerbaijan called manana and the second place went to like uh, another really talented singer from thailand uh, and uh, third place is actually a really good friend of mine who uh, is vietnamese and is the biggest female pop star in vietnam at the moment um so i it nice. was really nice to rub shoulders with these guys like big guys in the industry growing up um and also grow as an artist because all of these things help you shape your career definitely that's really nice to hear but i i don't think you have pressed this story as much as you should have i mean i i know i have a good time that you spoke of it yeah <laughs> and also um, talking about i mean like i said you played a role as an educator in music industry as well um so i i see a lot of people try really hard to bring up their own brand and there's other things like other things that they get distracted to and sometimes it kind of yeah. deviates them from their passions they get into the glamour sure. the money you know there's so many other factors that play a role in this whole process so you know what advice can you give to the young generation who's really aspiring to build their own brand because sometimes we we don't know sometimes you regret not picking the right making the right choices and not saying that's the thing you should have and saying that the thing you should shouldn't have so what's your advice on that hey somebody saying there's some sort of audio glitch guys yeah. that is an audio glitch is it is it on my side is it on hirushi's side is it better now is it me i'm going to lift this uh, there's a chance that it's it's mine i'm going to lift this camera i can hear you really clearly yeah me too maybe it's it's raining outside like properly raining yeah outside. it is uh, there's there's a thunderstorm happening suddenly you know because yeah. when hiroshi asked me to do interviews these kind of things happen <laughs> true um i'm i'm not going to lie this this happens to me a lot so does it really i thought you were just like <laughs> Yeah, no, it happens to you. The first live that I did, it it just was a big like a, a disaster. Oh, guys, um, Hiroshi, they say it's from your side. Thank you All so right. much, guys, for being our tech maybe, crew today. It's super. Maybe I'll try to but, put my earphones and then can see if yeah, it probably. will work. Yeah, probably. Because sometimes, like it, the audio reflects on. Let me try this. I hope it's getting better They've now. They've been saying that like from all over the place. I'm just scrolling through uh, the the people who's on here. I got a couple of friends as well. Oh, can is is everything okay yeah. now? Audio echoes is what they say. Uh guys is the audio issue yes. I've got a friend who says right. it's better now. Awesome. All right. Super. Cool. I I I had yeah. a feeling there's something there's something probably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah so maybe so, we'll do like a quick recap for these guys about what we were actually talking about in case it was yes. all mumbled. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So we were talking about how despite you having your own musical brand you are also an educator so what kind of advice yeah. can you give to the youngsters out there who are also trying to build their brand and it not like back in the day like now the platforms yeah. are free it's accessible everyone can just become famous instantly there are so many people playing in the market right now. So oh, how good. can you really connect to your passion not get distracted by the superficial things and how can you really connect to your passion and find your way as a person you know as a young musician i appreciate the fact that you actually said that because you understand what it takes in the industry right not a lot of musicians like you actually do um so what you said itself uh, is a huge thing because if anyone's taking a page out of your book hiroshi i feel uh, that they would be on the right path uh and i feel that you as a young musician you know what to do with your music career you know so it's important to know your brand it's important to know where to place yourself unfortunately for us we don't have management you know that's we have true to be why, our should, own why managers should i have management yeah, i don't get that like it would be nice to have someone who would handle pr and who would understand you from yeah. a very objective perspective and you know not get too emotional and get attached to your decisions and yeah. it's nice to have someone like that but it's it's i guess it's not really encouraged here yes and that's that is that's definitely scope for something like that because uh, 
I know a few artists who tried to get into it, but the thing is, like, uh, an artist can't be a manager for someone else. It's not possible because there's ego involved. You will always put yourself first. You will always give yourself the opportunities, or you would feel, why should I give my, uh, the other person these opportunities when I can make them my own? So it has to come from a, an objective perspective. It has to be an actual other industry, other part of the uh, of the entertainment industry where you go. This is representation. This is management. Yeah. Um, so uh, I mean, I've seen that done so well in most other countries like UK and stuff like that. And I have been represented and uh, managed in the UK, and I've seen what it's like. It's great to be able to hash out all your creative ideas in that space, uh, you know, and. Uh, have someone else look after you or take care of you creatively as well as uh, on a on a marketing level, right? So unfortunately, we don't have that. So in Sri Lanka, there's the added layer of us needing to learn that as musicians coming out as well. So it, it's difficult. It's a very challenging platform being in the music industry in Sri Lanka. Coming from a small island with 20 odd million people to cater to, as opposed to being in a big industry like uh, with 1.9 billion people in India. Uh, true. So it's a different game. It's a different game. <laughs> yeah. But and that being said, I think we have so much of talent. We have a so lot much. of talent. Definitely. Definitely. And also, um, this is just a, like a quick question just to get your opinion. You know how um, there's a lot of music streaming platforms that are run glo globally, including like Spotify, iTunes, like that. Um, yeah. Do you think that Sri Lanka is also yet to create their own local streaming platform, a solid platform where we can bring in revenue, we can actually bring up the standard industry? Do you think streaming services could like play a good role in that? I think so. I think the way the world is progressing forward is streaming. No one's downloading anything anymore. True. Yeah. I mean, everyone's moved on to Apple Music. Everyone's moved on to Spotify and Deezer and all that stuff. We are just still in this little sinkhole of like middle, like the middle digital age where, I mean, you know, we, st we are still yet to have an official MCN for YouTube. We don't have YouTube officially in Sri Lanka. Our artists are struggling. They can't get verified on Instagram. It's like yeah. it's like you throw a social media party if you're a verified artist on Instagram. That's true. That's what I realized. You know, it's so ridiculous because these things need to be looked into. And then again, it comes to the things that I just said: representation, management. Those are important because if those bodies were there to support local artists, we would have formed a better industry. That's so. True. There's a lot of things in the process of the entertainment industry that need to be sorted out. And uh, these are mostly issues with relate, which are related to ego that don't get sorted out. It's always you ego. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think people just need to put their personal stuff behind them and be like, uh, yeah, okay, we're going to unite to actually get this front sorted. Um, I mean... Yes, we're a small country, so we have to fight a lot harder. Um, uh, but I think monetization, there, there's, definitely, there's definitely a lot of scope for monetization. If you speak to the YouTubers right now, like Podda, Naura, and all of them, there are things that they tell us that we don't even know. You know? Like, no way. Like, there's something oh my like God, that. Guys, it's like a completely different platform. Like We're used to selling albums. And beyond that, uh, when it comes to monetization of streaming, digital downloads and stuff like that we don't even know what's going on you know yeah maybe we need there to should figure be, that out but definitely and also there should be i guess a, a part where there's some agency or an entity that could educate people on how to really exactly. take the operation of social media how to really what is the concept of monetization is like maybe that's also yeah. something we need to look into i mean there are a lot of um, like entertainment lawyers who are willing to support us uh, but it's just, again, one tiny portion of it all. Like you said, there have to be agencies involved. And these agencies are focused still on uh, PRBT and like, you know, ringtone downloads, which is not, again, our market. It's a completely different market for the mass market. Uh, most of the artists who create music like myself, like Maria, like you, like Tehani who's here right now, saying something to us yeah uh, like everyone in the contemporary music field who who border on 
uh, hip hop r&b pop yeah those genres it's a different market it's a small niche market but it's also a business model that can be looked at which can be monetized pretty well it's just that Definitely. someone needs to do it that's true i guess we yeah. this is something that guys for those who are watching us let's just team up and and just do this because it's really important yeah. i mean there's so much money going out of the country um yeah. to other foreign online like streaming services i was i was thinking the same thing for filmography as well if we have a platform yeah. where people can submit their work and make their revenue maybe gradually the average standards will go up and we don't have to worry about theaters closing down and the you know budget cuts and the drawbacks maybe we can really take it to another level you know there is somebody is asking so who's got these egos no guys i wasn't getting personal <laughs> with anyone i'm just saying egos in general everybody in has general, an ego you know me yeah. all of us yeah. if there's a you part of us that everyone. holds us back <laughs> yeah so i I, know, i think we have just like started a conversation that's going to continue after this instagram chat with re- yeah. with regards to how we're going to monetize this stuff but Let's yeah i mean at least this conversation has begun right so that's a great space it's it's a good yeah. thing that we have that thought in our head yeah, right for sure and and yeah. yeah and with that also like i mean i have seen so much of great talent that when i look at it i'm like how is it not trending in india how like i have seen artists and work that deserves to be heard by you know yeah. other countries other cultures and i was thinking if i heard this like from another culture i would listen to it you know it's it's so Definitely. beautiful Definitely. yeah there and, are so many like hindi or even like i i don't know if i can pick up anything on youtube even in another language that really spurs my emotions or like right now i'm listening to this this artist from like i don't even know where right sings in english but from norway right and these okay. like banging bass beats which are like so cool right so Love i think it. we should be exposed to like other other kinds of music other cultures and there should be a way for us to be exposed to those kind of things so we need to know a little bit about uh how to source those as well yeah the exposure that exposure needs to be marketed wisely to other countries too just like our artists who are amazing like like these kids on the voice uh who i sometimes i stand up because i'm i strongly believe in like how far they can go and i really want to get them in my team because i feel so passionately about what i can do for their careers because i've done the whole hog i I've, i've run the race i i know what it takes and also what uh uh you need to do to get yourself out there so these kids like kids like that really talented kids need to go global and they have the time to do it they're still like 17 years old you know uh there has to be a platform sure. yeah and and to make it global i mean there's a there's definitely a part of you your your charisma your um i guess a certain behavior or who you are as a person that's something that you indeed. can't really anyone else can repl- replace right so yeah to, for someone who's targeting a global audience what kind of advice can you give because you have definitely you have a global experience with your touring with you know being exposed to different countries going around and promoting your work yeah. what kind of advice can you give if you're targeting onto the global yeah. platform if there's anyone out there first of all i love your questions hiroshi because they come from such a like a musician perspective i'm a nerd i've never had it <laughs> i've never had an interview <laughs> with someone who's been like you know so precise about what they're talking about usually it's like you know very like you it's going with an energy with him it's always like yeah you know like i was like i don't even know so no we're not like yeah yeah wow i mean it's 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 refreshing to do a to do a interview with a musician so like okay love it. you said I about going it. global right <laughs> um mm-hmm. you're asking me about what the opportunities to go global and what it takes it like i mean what kind of elements yeah if you could just maybe it, it, it really depends on uh how you want to go if you have the cash there are straightforward mm, many ways, ways right? yeah i'm talking like millions of dollars you want to invest in promoting that one hit that you believe in strongly right then you can go commercial radio but who's got time for that because you are trying to build a brand you're trying to build something that is going to be generating an income for yourself that's going to be a career more than anything else and sure. you don't want to just invest like you know blindly in something like that so the best way to go i feel 
uh, which I've tried and tested as well, is do the hard work because the hard work really counts. Uh, I pushed a lot of my songs to the UK. It's difficult. You'll have to uh, be very underground for a while. You probably also have to move there and like, you know, suss out the scene and see what it's like at least like for six months. Like when I released my international album, they were like, move to Mumbai. I was like, dudes, I can't move to Mumbai. I'm at the peak of my career in Sri Lanka at the moment. If I let that go and I move to Mumbai to try and make it in your industry, I'm neither going to be Ashanti in Sri Lanka, neither am I going to be Ashanti in India. Uh, it's I a mean, gamble. maybe you'll be happy to crack a deal. It's a gamble. But it, it, it's, it's what you're willing to sacrifice and how far you're willing to go. Uh, sometimes the safe route may not be the best route. Sometimes risk may be good, but you have to assess your personal situation and see what you can do. So it's all about what you can do and the risks you can take um, and financially how much you can invest. Uh, or if you can't, it's a lot of work. Um, it's about getting to know people, networking. Uh, it's about building relationships. It's about being true to your brand, true to your music, true to your sound. There's so much. It's tough. So much. I mean, Tell me one Sri Lankan musician, I would say not more than two to three Sri Lankan musicians have made it globally, right? Uh, so, there's a reason for that. Yeah, I mean, mid not management also plays a role. Anyway, management definitely plays a role. I mean, the first thing that you should do is if you feel strongly about the fact that you can take your music global, go please get yourself some proper representation because that really goes a long way. Like, uh, now say guys like Arjun, they're doing really well even on YouTube and things like that, even though he hasn't made any phenomenal like, you know, radio charting hits because he's got good management. He's being managed by, um, I don't know if anyone knows this and whether he, it's still on, but the last time I spoke with him, uh, he was being managed by Jesse J's management. So management is important. Very, very important. Um, no, ma'am. Yeah. That's something to keep in mind. Well, there we writing spoke about here, a lot of things. I am writing down, so I'm already having like so much of notes. <laughs> I'm okay. like, I'm just like getting it from the wise person was, you know, I like, <laughs> because you're someone I can really rely on in terms of what you say. Um, but thank, thank you for you. giving, you know, thank you for explicitly like, you know, explaining the whole situation and, you know, the process of how things get done. And um, it's up to us to personalize it and work on our own on it. Um, so with that, we're wrapping up the uh, discussion, but I have a few questions. This is a small rapid sure. fire question. Something Ooh, a little fun. And it's, a, it's a little like, just a little cute, casual like set of questions. So are okay. you good? Let's uh, do it. All right, all right. So number one, if you were given a chance to do a soundtrack for a Hollywood movie, which one would you pick? Hollywood movie? Yeah, you're, you're given um, to do the main like, no, theme song. No, I'd, I'd have like to be a sucker and say something like, Notting Hill is my favorite movie. I'll make oh, a soundtrack yes. for that. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Notting Hill. Love that. Um, yeah. All right. So your, um, your favorite color plus... The last thing... Oh, someone's got another, is... an, another suggestion. Oh, it should have been James Bond. One. I know. Should have been James, James Bond, Bond, you know? Yeah, that would have been eternal. See, I should, yeah. See, if I had management, they would tell me that. You should be my manager. Yeah. It's like, you should definitely <laughs> go for James Bond. Oh my God, yes. James Bond is definitely something of great eternal. magnitude. Yeah, it's yeah. eternal. And just keep going also. <laughs> of course. And moving on to the second question. Uh, your favorite color plus the last thing you ate is going to be your stage name. What would it be? Today's a bad day. It's Mother's Day. It's a cheap day. <laughs> it's all right. Go ahead. Spill it out. Right. <laughs> so my favorite color is black. Black. And the last thing I ate was a strawberry waffle. All right. Black waffle. <laughs> like, that's going to be your statement. That, that sounds more like a gangster name. Like, what's your rap name? Yeah, Black, Black Waffle. Waffle. <laughs> it's a waffle. has that ring to it. I'm definitely going to make you a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could switch places with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Switch lives. Just 24 hours, you know, just to see what it is like. 
switch lives mhm superman i get a lot of yeah. stuff done super fast true, true. and true. i get fly as well which is great yeah you can get a good view yeah. of everything <laughs> of course and corona is <laughs> not going to be so high from there so so i'll be safe also yeah you'll be super safe um so if you could, if you were ever to make the headlines on a newspaper what would it say I hope it doesn't say anything to do with black waffle <laughs> <laughs> black waffle strikes again in a superman costume <laughs> superman combats the black waffle <laughs> oh god <laughs> I would love to see you like getting nominated for like the yeah I don't know like an internationally acclaimed award that's like my dream for you. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. Would you want that too or do you have anything that Well, I'll take like... it if you're giving it to me like you know if you want if you think that that's like where I should be. Yes, that's what I see. <laughs> okay. Okay. But no, seriously, what what would you <laughs> what would you think? Definitely not robbing a bank, but Ha, huh, yeah. Uh Um I don't know I've never really thought about it like you know like every day I inspire to do the best that I can do for myself and and I don't, don't think about that, the yeah. results like you know when I see the results like then I'm just like whoa uh okay I just did that that's cool on that's to the much next better yeah it's Thank a process Thank you next yeah. <laughs> Thank you next <laughs> Love it love that answer it's amazing Um and the last question is going to be super simple what is the first thing you're going to do when you are legally allowed to leave your house I was like wait I was legal for a while <laughs> for a good while now <laughs> legally allowed to do what <laughs> legally allowed to go out yeah um I'm going to go see my best friends I really miss them oh give them some love yeah Yes. <laughs> All right, so you successfully answered my questions. They're not that difficult. Yay. It's like super hypothetical. And with that, we are wrapping up today's live session. It was Ashanti, ladies and gentlemen. She is doing amazing. And do you want to say anything any last few words before we wrap up on the live because I know that you're going to be on television and you know I I saw like a few updates coming up and Just tell us, you know, what you will be doing very soon just so everyone can kind of be on their toes on it. People are asking me, don't you miss your friends from Voice? Yes, I really miss my friends from Voice. Aww. I miss Raini, I miss Dumal, I miss Sanuka, I miss my team guys. Uh I mean, you know, I think after this curfew is lifted and we are all able to work properly, it will be such a blessing to just go back to work. I'll be running back to work. I'll be sprinting back to work. Uh everybody will have so much more appreciation of their lives and their time and what they do. I don't think anyone will ever take anything for granted. So I'm looking forward. I'm really looking forward to getting back into the grind. Um yeah. All good. So all the very best with everything you do, Ashanti. Do keep us posted. Don't like yeah. disappear. You gotta, you gotta keep us updated on everything you're doing because we're definitely watching you and we're being inspired by you. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank bro. you. Lots of music <laughs> coming up soon, and also, guys, in another thirty-four minutes, you can catch. Sorry, not thirty-four. Seven thirty. Another an hour. An hour. Let's not get specific. Yeah. I guess okay. fifty-four. You know, almost an hour. <laughs> almost an hour. You can catch me on the Voice. I'll be discussing my team. Uh, we've got a lot of talent. Um, I'll be talking about the second half of my team tonight. Um, so thanks so much for joining us, and it's been uh, a pleasure catching up with you, Hiroshi, and having chat. Me too. Hope you're not feeling under the weather coach. today. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> All right. See you soon Ashanti do take care You too bye 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 And that was Ashanti joining in with us for our latest edition on Instagram live thank you so much for being a part of it and for those who did miss it or those who are missing out on it we will be posting this as an IGTV video and um so thank you so much for being a part of this and uh keep following us up to get verified information important updates pertaining to the situation stay safe follow the guidelines support the national response in every way possible until then take care
Here she is signing out. <laughs>